been seeing a giant university. Two days to month end, they write a notice, salary will be late. They didn't know the month was going to end. That was uh, Uasu Secretary General Constantine Wasonga, and of course uh, the man who called for this uh, strike, the third one in a year. Joining us now by way of a phone is Haman Manyora, an analyst. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Manyora, this evening. I would want us to begin with the current crisis that the higher um, learning sector in this country is facing. Yes. What are your thoughts? So what are your thoughts about um, what the lecturers are talking about, the 2013 to 2017 uh, CBA, a conversation that has constantly been there, uh, but uh, seemingly there seems to be a vicious cycle every year with the lecturers in the higher learning, um, uh, high learning institutions in the country. But even as that happens, we also know of strikes by the students. Um, what are your thoughts about the quality of education in the higher learning institutions in this country currently? Uh, thank you, Kista. First, it is really sad. Sad that as a country we should be perpetually be in this state of strikes. If it is not doctors, it is nurses. If it is not nurses, it is other paramedics. Then you come around to university lecturers and on and on. I think it is really sad as a country. Uh, as, as you rightly put it, this has been going on for a while. And uh, the most saddening bit of it is that, first, the lecturers are not even asking a lot of money. Secondly, it is money that was negotiated, CBS signed, and registered with the court. So it is really disturbing that such a little money, well negotiated by the rightful organs, registered in a court, and then they are not paying it. You, you can't explain it. It's very difficult to explain it. As a lecturer yourself, I would just want to get the perspective uh, from, uh, uh, from you, looking at the amount of money that one uses um, to train, to even become a professor in the university, vis-a-vis -vis what lecturers are paid in this country. Um, uh, what are your thoughts? Because uh, we have an increasing number of lecturers who are opting to teach in foreign countries. Only one word can describe this. That is pathetic. Since we started the, what you call open learning, where we have students who are working and uh, attending university at the same time, we have situations where the people we teach at the university earn a lot more than we do. We have situations in this country where we are losing trained manpower to even very poor countries. Why would we lose trained manpower in terms of doctors and professors and other highly skilled manpower to small countries like Botswana and Namibia. Like I said, it's pathetic, it's tragic, but the much more serious issue is we should understand that no country will ever develop without dropping in education. That if you look at countries that are developed, there is a serious correlation between education and development. So the question of manpower is something any serious country will take seriously. Now, when you pay lecturers the way you pay, then you are actually, in a sense, saying you don't really care about education. And it is true they don't care about education because the people who lead this country and make decisions in this country don't take their children to Kenyan schools. They don't have their children in Kenyan universities. So it is true to say they don't even care. If indeed they care, surely how would a government be unable to pay university professors in 31 public universities? a mere five billion for one year. Has this directly affected uh, the students and, um, in essence, the quality of education in high learning institutions, public ones, of course, in this country? Definitely. The, university, the, the universities have, this is the third strike. When you add in strikes by students for similar things which are related to all these kind of issues and bad management, then you rope in, for example, the, 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 the elections this year. In a sense, we are saying, for example, the University of Nairobi, the whole year is wasted. That is at the level of just time. But in terms of quality, if you have the people who are supposed to teach perpetually chasing peanuts, little money, if you have the best educated people in our country having to carry twigs and placards in the streets, I almost cried one day when I saw doctors carrying twigs lying in the roads on Kenyatta Avenue 
the best brains, the people we carried shoulder high when they scored highs in KCPE, the people who are carried shoulder high when they talked at, 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 at the other level, the Form 4 level. These are the same people we are making to roll in roll, uh, on roll, carry trips, so that they, you may increase their salary by peanuts. I think it's really sad. We are not serious as a people. So then how do we, where do we go from here? How do we heal um, this particular problem that uh, constantly refuses to go away? My, 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 my suggestion as far as salary in this country is concerned, generally for all workers, the problem we have is that we inherited structures that were colonial in nature. The jobs that were being done were by Africans. If the same job was being done by a white man, the white man or white man was being paid more. So we've carried that kind of bad arrangement in all sec public sectors. We need to sit down and ask a simple question. If somebody who are work is working in Nairobi, a poor person, basic job, what would they need to survive on? Not to live like a king, just to survive on. And if we start from there, then we shall go up and we shall then be in a position to decide mm -hmm. and to see easily how much would you need to pay everybody else in the public sector. But these questions of addressing in terms of percentages, in terms of saying so much of our GDP, so much of our income, that will never solve it. We have to start somewhere basic. As a human being, what yes. would you need to survive in Nairobi? Yes. And then we move up. Haman Manyora there, um, uh, lecturer as well as an analyst. I would really like to have my panelists react to what you're saying, um, talking about the quality of education and the amount of time wasted. If it's not a lecturer's strike, it is a um, student's strike. In the university, as a parent, Mike Gwanda, do you feel cheated specifically with this academic year this time around? Uh, we are definitely cheated in this academic year. Um, our students, our children are not able to be in college at all. And, uh, and sometimes, uh, you know, students are quite a handful when they're in their house while they're supposed to be in school. I mean, uh, you keep on, uh, you know, extinguishing this fire and this fire and extinguishing another fire. When they're supposed to be taking time in school and learning what uh, we paid for, unfortunately. Uh, you know, you know, Akisa, it is when you do a comparative study of what is happening in the West that uh, you know purely uh, you know uh, directs our our education system in this country. You will not believe how seriously tech matters of education. I mean, we are having a country where the uh, the dons or the lecturers give notice of strike and nobody goes to talk to them. Uh, they give another notice of strike and nobody goes to talk to them. They wait until these people are on strike and the only thing you can hear, you know, the relevant authority says, oh, you need to go back to classes so that we can start this negotiation. And the question is, what has SRC been doing, you know? And, and if anything, look at the other cases like health, the nurses just strike for about more than a, a, a hundred days. We have doctors who are just striked, and we have uh, you know, many other you know, professionals striking. And then you have the dons who are actually training all these professions in this country. And you're wondering, if we cannot even listen to our dons, who are we going to ever listen for the development of this country? If we can't train our doctors because the dons have down their tools, who are we going to graduate tomorrow so that our hospitals are taken care of? Now, I'll give you an, uh, just a little example of what happens yeah. in the US. A student in the US is such an important person to a government that if he does not go to school just for a day, a social worker will have to physically find out what happened to that uh, student. And if you, I, I mean, abroad we have what is called a point system for any uh, you know, traffic offense, but if you ever passed a, a stop, a, a, a school bus on a stop sign, you will be fined the highest of all the points simply because you put a child in danger. That child is supposed to be protected. If our children are not protected in school, in fact, to an extent where you have, uh, you know, um, police uh, get into their dorms and, and then they close school because they were traumatized as a result of 
Borapen at the University of Nairobi, where uh, you know architectural students were literally clobbered in school, and then they close school indefinitely, and then these doctors go on strike. And so the question we are asking is, how long is this going to continue? And why can't the government come to their senses and know that even if you work for the government, that child that you have that goes to that university will not be spared when the universities are closed. And if anything, that is perhaps what is encouraging our, our rich people and, and you know, our wealthy people to take their children abroad. Because public university just don't seem to be a place where people can go have education for the set time and graduate. In fact, people are flooding private universities, not because they like it. it is expensive, but right. because they know that those kids will be right. able to graduate within a short time. All right, I want to bring in uh, Edwin Kigoli to just speak on behalf of the students. You've lost a lot uh, um, in terms of uh, learning, uh, doing exams, and of course some um, for their graduations will be aff affected uh, this year. How do you move, move on from this as students? You're talking about starting a hunger strike. Um, how um, effective do you think that will be as students? Before I engage the issue of a hunger strike, yes. Akisa, there are some fundamental issues that students are facing at this particular moment in time. Yes. If you look at students in Singapore, mm -hmm. those who come from poor backgrounds are given a three-year program to work with the government so that their fees is subsidized. This government of Singapore ensures that the bright and sharp minds in that nation are not wasted. In Kenya here, education, higher education is actually out of bounds for those people who come from poor backgrounds. If you look at what Higher Education Loans Board is giving us, for that person who comes from a really humble background, they cannot meet the balance of fees. Look at our lecturers right now. You look, you, you may find a situation where a lecturer is handling around 500 students. And this particular lecturer is supposed to mark the cut scripts, is supposed to mark the end of semester exam scripts. These lecturers actually are overburdened. And what they are asking for is not an impossibility. If it is, let the government come out and demonstrate how impossible it is to actually meet the CBA. Another thing, Akisa, is this. This December, yes. students are supposed to graduate. Mm -hmm. When I was coming here, I've met a couple of students who have really registered their frustration mm -hmm. on what they are going through. I've met a student who comes from Samburu, and this student was so frustrated that mm -hmm. even he lacked transport back home because when he is in class, yes. he's in school. He spends a lot on food, on accommodation, mm -hmm. yet no learning is going on. So then, so then um, uh, do you think the hunger strike is the best way to go um, as students? We say this, this is what we are saying. Yes. It is our right to eat, and the right to education is guaranteed under Article 43, 1F of the Kenyan Constitution. The President swore to defend this Constitution. We say, President, it is within your jurisdiction and mandate to direct or issue an executive order so that lecturers are paid and we resume our lectures. We say we are going to forfeit our eating, we are going to do that so that we pass a message that, hey, look, our right to education is being trampled, our right to education is being infringed, it is being threatened. And remember, the Constitution under the Bill of Rights give any Kenya the legitimacy to go to court and argue that a right or fundamental freedom is threatened or likely to be threatened. And we say our right to education under Article 43, 1F has already been threatened. And we, what we are saying is this, Next week, also, we'll be moving to court to seek a court intervention yeah. on this issue. Mm -hmm. We are going to make sure that the government listens to us. Right. Tomorrow, the hunger strike starts. All right. I would want us to wrap up, but quickly, Mr. Agwanda, as a parent, talks of a hunger strike, as he says, they begin tomorrow. Does it worry you as a parent? I will tell you what, Akisa, if that is what it will take for the government to listen to these students, they'd rather do it. Because this, unfortunately, is a government that knows 
only the language of pressure. And without pressure, it is practically impossible yeah. for the government to listen to you. I mean, uh, what we're seeing as the strike of the dawns is just a tip of iceberg in what is happening in our higher learning institution. I can tell you for free that this uh, professors are not even able to have finances. If they cannot be paid their salaries that was negotiated and agreed upon and set aside, how, where are they going to find money for research? A student can only advance in the ability of research when there are resources for them to do research. Where will they find money for trainings mm -hmm. every single year? The dons are supposed at least to go for seminars, maybe two or three a year. They do not have those resources. Yes. Where are they going to find money, literally, even to promote those right. professors? Yes. And so this is just a tip of iceberg. Okay. I think it is high time that they engage in serious discussion mm -hmm. about higher learning institutions. All right, let's engage uh, Haman Manyora, an analyst and, um, uh, of course, a lecturer as well. Um, of course, we're talking about an academic year that has been technically wasted for the students. Uh, what are the long-term effects of uh, the tribulations the students and lecturers have had to go through in this particular academic year, Manyora? Even if you don't look at uh, the academics of it, even if you just look at the social uh, aspect, there are young girls who come to Nairobi from Mumias, from Nyeri, from whatever it is, perhaps even come to Nairobi for the first time, young men and, and women. Mm -hmm. You can just look at how much they would be missed if they reported and there was nobody teaching them. Like, for example, here, some universities have... Have, have, have opened their, their, their and, and they ask the students to come when the lectures are on, 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 on strike. So looking at even just from the social point of view, you realize that uh, we, we don't seem to care. But in the, long, in, the, in, the, in the long term, we are looking at people who will have received snippets of education. You come for three, four weeks, there's something, go back home somehow, panel beat everything here and there, arrange, give them an exam, at the end of the day, give them a certificate. Mm -hmm. Then we are saying we are not even interested in the quality of education we are giving children. Because at the end of the day, universities like government would want to show and prove that the, the strike was not effective, there was learning as we normally hear, All right. and in the process, they will fail to admit that there was time wasted or lost All right. for which they should make arrangements. And then, because they will proceed as if time was not wasted, yeah they will end up giving certificates. All right. I mean, your guess is as good as mine, yeah. what kind of certificates those will be. All right, snippets of education is what Haman Manyora says students have had in public universities this year owing to the lecturer's strike the third time this time round. That's how we wrap it up here on The Big Story in Studio. I was joined by Edwin Kegoli, the chairman of the Moi University Students Edu uh, Organization. Micah Gwanda is an education analyst as well as a parent and Haman Manyora, lecturer and analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. In a short while, I will be bringing you KTN Primetime News. So don't go too far. I am Akisa Ondera. Good evening. Thank you.